So let's start with a new topic that is mathematical physics or you can say mathematical tool related to physics. This part, I will define you some basic part, such as in algebra, I will define you quadratic equation, series, trigonometric, and then I will start calculus and logarithmic function, okay? This all would help you in later on physics. So let's start with first part, quadratic equation. You know, you will all have learned this part in your last class. If any of the expression ax squared plus bx plus c is equals to zero, in which a, the coefficient of highest power, would not be equals to zero, is called quality equation. So how to solve it? So we have mainly three different ways to solve it. First one is middle term splitting. Second one is squaring, completing the square method. And third one is using formula, quadratic formula. I think, is it clear to all of you? These yes, are all three sir. method? Yes. Okay. So let's start with the problem. I'm giving you one problem. Suppose if you have x squared minus 5x minus 6 is equals to 0. Find x. Try to solve. Mamuna, take your calculation. This is wrong. Good, Nabila. Sir, I have been informed today that my, uh, that my pre boards are from 4th November and the first paper is physics. And how many chapters are coming? The first book the whole of it. Good. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Sorry, sir, I'm late. So I don't know, sir, there's always some problem with my laptop, sir. Okay, sorry. no problem. Sir, can you just tell me what is there? Oh, I've just you... started. I've just started mathematical physics in which I have explained quality equation and I'm given a problem. Okay, sir.
Herr Müller, haben wir dann? So what I've done, but I'm, I, I just uh, feel like I'm getting the same answer. I don't know where I'm going wrong. Reza? Yes, sir. Have you solved it? Yes, sir. I have sent you the message. I think you haven't sent to me. I'll resend. to Zaid, sir. Okay. You all are doing the same mistake. Just remember the concept behind it. You have to take product of first term and last term. A and C. Good, Nabila. So it will be AC. Now, depending upon this product, you have to take factor of it. Factorize it and arrange that particular factor in same sign or opposite sign, depending upon polarity or sign of C. So you have to arrange this factor in same sign or opposite sign depending upon value of or sign of C. If C is in positive, just arrange factor of AC in same sign. If C is negative, so arrange the factor of AC in opposite sign. Let's say from this example, we have one as coefficient of X square and six as constant term. So it will be just six. So just take factor of it. So you'll get one into six or two into three. These are two factors. Now you have to arrange these factor using same sign or opposite sign, depending upon sign of C. So we have six as constant term, but having negative value. So it means, it means you have to arrange the factor in opposite sign. Opposite sign of two terms will define you subtraction such that is equals to the middle part. So if you subtract first two part, you will get five. But if you subtract second factor, you will get one or minus one. So you have to take this part. So now it will be written as x squared minus six x plus x minus six would be zero. But you all have done same mistake like this. X squared minus two X minus three X minus six is equals to zero. Raza, I think you have done this. Yes, sir. Now, after taking the middle term, just see whether all of the term are in paired form or not on the basis of their sign. If you break this component like this, you will have three negative sign and just one positive sign. They won't be paired, so it won't be possible. But if you factorize it or if you have taken middle term to be this part, we have two negative term and two positive term, so it will be paired. Is it clear, Mamuna? Yes, sir. So how to proceed any quadratic formula or quadratic equation? You have to take first product of first and last term. Now take factor of it and arrange the factor on the basis of sine of C in same sign or opposite sign, which equals to the middle part, okay? Now from this part, take X as common. And from this part, take one as common. So it will be X, x minus six, if you take out one as common, you will get x minus six is equals to zero. x minus six taken out, so it left with x plus one equals to zero. So x would be six and x would be equals to minus one. So this will be your final answer.
Understood, sir. Vaishno, have you done? No, sir, just a minute. Finish, sir. Mikhail, done? Yes, sir, finished. The next part in this mathematical section is to define about CDs. Series nothing but a sequence of number arranged on the basis of some pattern. Let's say if you have two, five, eight, eleven, and so on, and they will have two, four, eight, sixteen, and so on. These two different sequences have different arrangement. In first part, if you take difference of any two consecutive number. 5 minus 3, you will get 3. 5 minus 2, 3. Similarly, 8 minus 5, you will get 3. 11 minus 8, you will get 3. So you can say in this arrangement, the common difference between any two pair is same. So we can represent it by D, which is nothing but A2 minus A1. So we call it as common difference. So if a sequence of number arranged on the basis of common difference means same term will be added with each part or subtracted with each part, this sequence is called AP or arithmetic progression. But in second part, if you take the difference of into consecutive number, four minus two, it will give you two, but eight minus four, it will be four, 16 minus 8, it will be 8. The common difference between any two pair is not constant. So we can say this would be not in AP. Is it clear? Yes, yes, sir. Now take other part, that is common ratio between any two pair. So if you'll take 4 divided by 2, it will give you 2. 8 divided by 4, it will be 2. 16 divided by 8, it will be 2. So here, common ratio between any two number is constant. So we can say common ratio, which is represented by R and is equals to A2 by A1. So if a sequence of a number arranged on the basis of common ratio, we call it as geometric progression. Geometric progression or simply GP. So we have mainly two different series. First is AP, arithmetic progression, <clears throat> and second is GP, geometric progression. So how to define sum or any term regarding each series? 
let's say for AP, <clears throat> nth term is equals to A plus N minus one times D. And sum mm -hmm. of term for N term is N by two to A plus N minus one into D. In all of this term, A is defining nothing but first term. So we can call it as A1 is equals to A or it would be just first term of the sequence. Similarly, if you have to define for GP, nth term is equals to A plus R to the power N minus one, where R is common ratio. And if you have to take sum, it would be equals to A, R to the power N minus one, divide by R minus one. Now, the most important part, if you have to take sum for infinite series, it will be equals to A divided by one minus R. So you have to remember only this formula for GP. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Raza, do you have any doubt? No, sir. Let's just write it down. <clears throat> Third year R represents the ratio, right? Yeah, common ratio. All right. Done, so. Knisa. Mikhil, have we done? I'm giving you an example. Suppose if you have eight plus four plus two plus so on to infinity. Evaluate it. Check the sequence, whether it is in AP or GP and accordingly apply the formula and try to get
Raza, tell me whether the sequence is in AP or GP? GP. Good. Try to find first term common ratio and put the formula. Namuna, just check your calculation. If you will add just three terms, you will get 14, which is more than eight. Yes, ma'am, or no? So this will be your first term, A, and common ratio would be A2 divided by A1, which would be equals to half. Just put these two values in the formula, you'll get answer. Good, Nabila. Good, Mamuna. Raza, just send me your answer. Vashna, have a solved? Just a minute, sir. Good, Mikhail. <clears throat> Suppose if you apply S infinity is A over 1 minus R, A is nothing but A. Divide by 1 minus R, R is nothing but 2. So take LCM of these two parts. So it will be, it will be 2. So you'll write it as two divided by two minus one by two. So eight divided by two minus one, one, 
So it will be one divided by two. This two we move to numerator to multiply it by six, eight. So you'll get your answer to be 16. Okay, Raza? Yes, sir. Okay, Mamona. So we have finished this series or algebra part. The next part is to define trigo. In trigonometry, you must have learned in your class 10 about some trigonometric ratios. It simply defines you relation between angle and corresponding side related to any triangle. But the most simplest triangle is a right angle triangle. So we mainly start with a right angle triangle. Suppose in this triangle, we have theta to be this part. So opposite to this particular theta would be called as perpendicular and adjacent to th this theta would be called as base. So it will be your perpendicular. And it will be your base. And the longest side of right angle triangle is called as hypotenuse. Using these three sides and defining this particular angle, we have totally six different trigonometric ratios. First is sine theta, which is equals to perpendicular by hypotenuse. So reciprocal of it would be cosec theta, hypotenuse by perpendicular. Next is cos theta, which is equals to base over hypotenuse. And sec theta, which is equals to hypotenuse by base. Next is tan theta, which is equals to perpendicular by base and cot theta, which is equals to base by perpendicular. Next is tan theta is equals to sin theta divided by cos theta and cot theta is equals to cos theta divided by sin theta. So we have mainly these trigonometric ratios as basic of trigonometry. We have to define values and sum of angle in this whole part, which will help you more in later on. Just write it down. You may learn this. Sine square theta plus cos square theta is equals to one. Sec square theta minus tan square theta is equals to one. And next is cosec square theta minus cot square theta is equals to one. Just write it down. <clears throat> Dancer. Dancer. Ash, no? Dan? Yes, sir. Next is to define 
about values. In class 10th, you must have learned only for zero to 90 degree for any of the trigonometric ratios. Now we have to define all of different values. Let's say sine of 120 degree, cos of 210 degree. How to define it? For this, I'm giving you some tip, some relation. For any of the trigonometric part, <clears throat> let's say zero degree, 30 degree, 45 degree, 60 degree, 90 degree. So first of all, right number starting from zero, one, two, three, and four. Divide each part by four and take square root of it. So this particular term will define you the value for sine theta. Zero upon four would be zero. 1 upon 4 would be 1 upon 2, 2 upon 4 would be 1 upon root 2, and similarly, root 3 upon 2, and it would be 1. Is it clear to everyone? Yes, sir. Now, reverse this particular number to get cos. As we have 1 here, let's move it to this part, so it will be 1. We have root three by two is for this. So it will be root three by two. It will be one by root two and it will be one and it will be zero. Now to define tan, which is nothing but ratio of sine theta and cos theta. So just divide it. So you will get zero. One by root three, one root three. Here we have one upon zero which may be called as not defined till class 10th, but here and onward, you will say infinity. Now take reciprocal of all these terms, you will get cosec theta, sec theta, and cot theta respectively. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. Talk? Yes. Just write it down. Nikhil, have you done? Yes, sir, finished. Vashnav? Okay. Now the next thing is 
how to define values for more than 90 degree. So I'm giving you some hint. Let's say this is quadrant. So if you draw a triangle in first quadrant, it will have these measurement base going along positive x-axis. So it will be positive perpendicular going along positive y-axis. So it will be positive and hypotenuse is nothing but square of sum of base and perpendicular. So it will be always positive. So if your theta is lying between zero to 90, the ratio of all trigonometric ratio would be always positive. So we can say all trigonometric term are positive in quadrant from zero degree to 90 degree. But if you draw a triangle in this second quadrant, base will move to the negative x-axis, so it will be negative. Perpendicular would be along positive y-axis, so it would be positive. So the term containing base would define you negative value. So in this second quadrant, sine theta and its reciprocal cosec theta would be positive. This is the whole term would be negative. Similarly, in third quadrant, tan theta and cot theta would be positive. This is the whole term would be negative. And in fourth quadrant, cos theta and its reciprocal sec theta would be positive just the whole term would be negative. So to remember this, just use the concept. After school, you must enter into college. So A means all, means in first quadrant, all trigonometric ratio would be positive. S means sine, in second quadrant, it would be positive. E means tan in third quadrant, tan theta would be positive. And C means cos in fourth quadrant, cos theta and its reciprocal would be positive. The rest of the whole term would be negative. Is it clear till this part? Yes, sir. Nabila, any doubt? Uh, sir, can you expand it once again, please? The after school to okay. college one. I have defined. If you draw a triangle to any of one of the quadrant, depending upon the sign of base and perpendicular and hypotenuse, the corresponding ratio would be positive or negative. So in first quadrant, all of the trigonometric ratio would be positive. In second, sine, third, tan, and fourth, cosec. So to remember this whole, I have defined you one statement. After school, you must enter into college. So it would be after school to college. The first alphabet in after is A. It means in first quadrant, all of the term would be positive. In second word, school, the first alphabet is S, means sine theta would be positive in second quadrant. Third word is T, two. T is tan. In third quadrant, tan theta would be positive, rest of the whole term would be negative. And your fourth word is college, in which first alphabet is C, means cos. In fourth quadrant, cos would be positive, the rest of the whole term would be negative. Is it clear? Yes, sir, clear. Good. Now, the next thing is to define how do you convert your angle. For this, I'm defining you one rule. While going in anti-clockwise direction, angle would be in positive, and while going along clockwise direction, angle would be taken in negative. So in clockwise direction, measurement of angle would be positive, and in anti-clockwise direction, measurement of angle would be negative. So on the base of this part, try to write 
each of the quadrant on the base of horizontal line. Let's say first it will be zero and this will be your one into dairy. Similarly, on moving again to this side, it will be 360 degree, complete angle. Now using it, if you move from this line to this line, you are moving in anti-clockwise direction. So the angle in this quadrant would be written as just theta, or it would be 360 degree plus theta. While going along clockwise direction to reach in fourth term, we are moving in clockwise direction, so it will be negative. So you can write it as 360 degree minus theta. Similarly, using this line, if you move along anti-clockwise to reach in third quadrant, it will be positive. So it will be 180 degree plus theta. And if you are moving clockwise direction to reach in second quadrant, angle would be in negative. So it will be minus theta. Is it clear? I have just defined all of the fourth quadrant, fourth quadrant using this horizontal line as base. And while moving in anti-clockwise direction, theta to be positive. And while moving in clockwise direction, theta would be in negative. Is it clear to everyone? Yes. Okay. No, yes. sir. Can you explain again? Suppose if you have to define angle for first quadrant. So you have to move from this line in anti-clockwise direction or clockwise direction to reach in first quadrant. You must have to move in anti-clockwise direction from this line to reach in this quadrant. Okay. And in anti-clockwise direction. Yeah, yes, sir. Just one minute. I have written wrong here. In clockwise direction, it would be negative and anti-clockwise direction should be positive. So while going in anti-clockwise direction, theta would be in positive. Suppose if you have to define angle for fourth quadrant, you must have to move from this line in clockwise direction. So theta, clockwise would, be, direction. So theta would be negative. Similarly, if you have to move in second quadrant from this line, it will be going along clockwise direction. So theta would be negative. And if you have to move in third quadrant from this line, you must move in anti-clockwise direction. So there would be positive. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, remember one rule. On horizontal line means angle containing 360 degree or 180 degree, there would be no change in trigonometric function it will remain the same. I'm defining you on the base, on this basis, how to calculate different values. First of all, write it down, this whole part. Raza, do you have any doubt? No, sir. Okay.
Vashna, have we done? Mikhail? Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Suppose if you have to calculate cos of 120 degree. For any of the numerical value, first of all, try to write this numerical value closest to its horizontal line. So 120 degree is closer to 180 degree as compared to 360 degree. It is more closer to 180 degree. So you can write this particular term as cos of 180 degree minus 60 degree. Is it clear? Reza? Yes, sir. Is it clear how to define 120 degree with respect to 180 degree? Yes, sir. Now, in this part, this one degree will define you nothing but just horizontal line. So this will define you horizontal line. And on horizontal line, there will be no change of trigonometric function. So you can say, this is your cos, so it will be remain cos. And we're left with this theta, so it will be just cos 60 degree. Now we have to next define whether this particular numerical value for which this trigonometric function is positive in that quadrant or not. So 120 degree must be lying in second quadrant. And from this part, you will say in second quadrant, only sine and its reciprocal would be positive. The rest of the whole term would be negative. So we can say cos theta would be negative in this second quadrant. Is it clear? So put a negative sign in front of it. Now solve it. So it will be minus cos of 60 degrees equals to one by two. So it will be value for cos of 120 degree. Is it clear, Nabila? Yes, sir. Raza, is it clear? Yes, sir. So for any of the numerical value, first of all, try to write that particular numerical part or angle in term of one degree or 360 degree. Then the first part, one degree or 360 degree, it will define you nothing but just horizontal line. And on horizontal line, there would be no change in trigonometric function. So keep this term as it is and bring this angle to it. Now, the next part is to define whether this trigonometric term would be positive or negative regarding this angle. On the basis of which you have to define this sign plus or minus, and then you'll get the result. Is a, your required value. Just write it down. I'm giving you some problem.
Have you all done? Good, Mamuna. Your answer is correct. Vashno, just send me your answer. Sir, is my second question also correct? Yeah. Sir, how are we supposed to solve this third question, sir? Try to write in terms of sum of or difference of n to part. Oh, okay, sir, understand. Good, Mikhail. For third part, if you solve cos of 180 degree, you may write it as plus zero or minus zero, depending upon your choice. So this 180 degree will define you nothing but horizontal line on which there will be no change. So it will be just cos of zero degree. But this angle would be in third quadrant where cos would be negative. So you can say it will be negative of cos zero. As cos zero is just one, so it will be minus one. Vashno, have we done? Yes, sir. Good. Sir, yes. how would it be in third quadrant, sir? Since it is in positive way, so you can say it will be slightly in third quadrant. Okay? okay. Or it will be yes, tending sir. to move along third quadrant. Yes, Similarly, if you write this tan of 330, so it will be tan 360 degree minus 30 degree. So, so this will be your horizontal line. So it will be tan of 30 degree only. And this angle would be in fourth quadrant where tan would be negative. So it will be minus of tan 30 degree and which would be equals to just one by root three. If you solve for the first part, write it as one degree minus of 45 degree. This is a horizontal line on which there will be no change. So it will be tan for sine 45. And this angle is lying in second quadrant where sine would be positive. So it will be plus sine 45, which is equals to one by root two. Mamona, I think you have wrongly done it. First part. Yes. Sign would be positive in first, second quadrant. So your answer would be positive one by root two. Nabila, are you there? Yes, sir, I'm here. Okay. Have you solved this? Yes, sir, I copied it. Okay. Raza? Yes, sir. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, you have to remember some of the formula, sum or difference of angle. Let's say if you have sine of A plus B, so it will be sine A times cos B plus cos A times sine B. If you have sine of A minus B, it would be equals to sine A cos B minus 
cos A times sine B. Now, if I put A and B to be equal, if A is equals to B is equals to theta, in first part, you will say it would be two times theta. So it will become two times sine theta times cos theta. Now just see, we have two theta, so it will be just theta and theta. So if you break this particular part to be theta, so this angle would become theta over two and theta over two. So just remember these two parts. Similarly, if we do for cos a plus b, so it would be cos a times cos b minus sine a into sine b. Cos of a minus b is Sir, equal how to... how will be the neg uh, negative sign? It should be plus, right? For which part? For cos into part? a plus b, yeah. In cos, if you have plus here, it will be negative here. But if you have negative here, it would be positive. So it will be cos of A into cos of B plus sine of A to sine of B. Now, if you put A and B to be equal, A is equals to B is equals to theta. And this part, you will guess cos two theta and which will be equals to cos square theta minus sine square theta. This is the most important formula. Now break this part into two part to define only in terms of cos. So it would be cos two theta is equals to, if you move, convert the sine square theta in terms of cos square theta, you will get two cos square theta minus one. So move this one to the other side, you will get one plus cos of two theta is equals to two cos square theta. Similarly, if you convert each term in terms of sine, you will get cos theta is equals to one minus two times of sine square theta. If you move one to the other side and negative to the other side, you will get one minus cos two theta is equals to two times sine square theta. If you have two theta here, it will be theta. Similarly, in both these two parts, to get cos square theta, there should be plus one. And to get sine square theta, there should be negative in between. So from this, you can say one plus cos theta would be equals to two times cos square by theta by two. And similarly, one minus cos theta would be equals to two times sine square theta by two. This all formula would help you in vector part and laws of motion. Is it clear? Yes. So just remember this whole part. Try to write. Most important is this.
Have you all done? Vashno, have you done? Sir, is this 10th grade maths a part of physics in this chapter? I think you haven't learned this whole in 10th class. Yes, we did. No, not this one, but the previous ones. Yeah. And I think you haven't. Do this as well. You have just done this part only in your 10th and this part. Yes. You have to use. Yes, sir. We didn't learn this part, sir. This quadrants and all we didn't learn, sir. Yeah. Sir, so first, are we going to use this all in physics, sir? Yeah. Okay, sir. Have you all done to this part? Yes, sir. <clears throat> yes. Raza? Yes, sir. Vashno, done? Yes, sir. Now, just remember one very important triangle. Suppose this is your base, which is three, four, and five. Most important, most basic particle in triplet. So the angle opposite to a smaller side would be smallest. So it would be 37 degree. And for this part opposite to it would be 53 degree. Just remember this triangle. If a triangle containing three, four, five, so the angle would be 37 degree, 53 degree, and 90 degree. Okay. Next, if theta is very small, let's say smaller than 30 degree, or you may use smaller than 10 degree, then tan theta sine theta equals to just theta in terms of radian measurement. I've defined you, we measure angle in two different units. First one would be in degree measurement and second one would be radian measurement. In degree measurement, they would have complete angle as 360 degree 
and radial measurement, it would be just two pi. There, there is some smaller value regarding this particular degree as one degree would be equals to 60 minute. Similarly, one minute is equals to 60 second comparable to time. So I'm giving you some relation in terms of direct conversion to radian. One degree would be equals to 1.72 into 10 to the power minus two radian. One minute is equals to 2.91 into 10 to the power minus four radian. And one second is equals to 4.85 into 10 to the power minus six radian. Now on this basis, if you have to solve tan of seven degree. So how will calculate it? You may write it as seven in terms of theta, but you have to convert this degree measurement in terms of radian measurement. Now, as one degree is equals to this much, so just multiply it by 1.72 into 10 to the power minus two. So it will be and put decimal after two-phase. So it will be 10.10 10 to the power minus two. So it will be 0 0.1034 as tan of 7 degree. Is it clear? If your angle is less than 10 degree, then tan of theta sine of theta would be equals to just theta in terms of radial measurement. So in all of these two parts, your theta would be in terms of degree measurement. So you have to convert that degree measurement in terms of radial measurement. So I've written some data. One degree is equals to this much amount. One minute is equals to this much. And one Sorry, your is voice is to... lagging. Okay, just one minute. Hello, is it clear? Yes, so we can hear you. So I'm defining you. If your theta, the angle measured is very small, which is less than 10 degrees Celsius, 10 degree. So if you have to calculate tan sine for this particular small angle, it would be just equals to theta, but theta would be in terms of radian. So how to convert that small angle to be in terms of radian. So I have defined you. If the angle would be in terms of degree, multiply it by 1.72 and 10 to the power minus two to get into radian. Similarly, if your angle would be in minute, so multiply it by this much. If it would be in second, multiply it by this much to convert into radian to, required, to get the required values. Is it clear, Nabila? Yes, sir. Okay, just write it down.
Have you all written to this part? Yes. Reza, do you have any doubt? No, sir. Vashno? Yes. Okay. So we have just finished this whole trigonometric part. Now, next term is to define calculus. Calculus is nothing but mathematics related to all different types of curve. So you can say mathematics related to all curve. As to defined by Newton. Suppose if you have to calculate slope of a particular line, let's say this is straight line for which we have coordinate as x1, y1 and x2, y2. So if you draw a line to this, like this, you will say this will be your x1 and this will be your x2. So if you take difference of these two parts, you will get x2 minus x1 as base of this triangle. Similarly, this will define you y2 and this will define you y1. So if you difference it, you will take y2 minus and you will get y2 minus y1. Now, let's say this will be your theta. In this part, in this triangle, we have perpendicular as y2 minus y1 and base as x2 minus x1, depending upon this theta. So you can say tan theta would be equals to perpendicular by base. So it will be y2 minus y1 by x2 minus x1 as slope of this particular line with respect to x-axis. So we may define it as m. Is it clear? Yes. Now there will be a problem. If you have to calculate slope of any curve, let's say, if you have a curve like this. So how do you define the inclination of this particular curve with respect to x-axis? That's why we need calculus. We can't use this formula to define the slope of any curve. This formula is valid to define slope only for a straight line for which you have some coordinate at diff two different end, okay? First of all, write it down, then I will define you about calculus. Have you all done? 
Yes, sir. Vaishnav. Yes, sir. Sir, one minute, sir. Can you show again? Okay. Okay, sir. Thank you. So, in calculus, we have mainly two different types. First is called differentiation. And second is called integration. Differentiation is nothing but process of breaking of a curve to define smallest strip so that you will be able to define slope, tangent, inclination, rate of change, and there are many more application of it. Suppose if you have a curve, like this, Now I have to break this curve into infinitely small segment. Let's say this is true. So that the width of this particular strip would be very small that it will simply define you just a point at this. Now, if you draw a line at this particular point, it will define you tangent to it. like this and from this tangent you would be able to define its inclination slow rate of change and so on so differentiation is nothing but breaking off any curve into infinitely small strip so that for that strip it will define you nothing but a single point and if you draw a tangent to that single point it will define you inclination slope of curve at that step is it clear? Yes, sir. Yes. So differentiation is nothing but splitting or breaking of a curve into infinitely small strip so that it tends to point to define slope, rate of change and so on. So how to define it, this differentiation? We have some formula regarding it. I'm defining you. First is if expression is y is equals to x raised to the power n, here x is your variable and n is any numerical part or exponential to it. So differentiation simply defines you dy dx. What do you mean by dy dx? You may write this change in y as delta y, and this change in x as delta x. Is it clear? This is nothing but difference of y2 and y1. So difference can be represented in mathematics by this delta if this difference is some finite value. Okay. Let's say if you have y1 is equals to 1, and y2 is equals to 3. So y2 minus y1 would be equals to just 2. You may write this difference as delta y is equals to 2. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Namuna, is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, since this particular term is defining you nothing but ratio of change of y 
with respect to change in x. Now, I have supposed to be this particular change to be very small that it tends to zero. Suppose if your x1 is one and if your x2 is 1.000001. So if you take the difference of these two parts as x2 minus x1, you will get 330.1 this part. Whether this numerical value is tending to zero or not, it is more closer to zero. Is it clear? Namona, is it clear? Yes, sir. So this difference, which was initially as delta x, we can now write it as dx, as this difference is going to be very small, which is comparable to or tending to zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So from this, you can conclude if your difference is very small, that it tends to zero. So this difference would be written as dx. Nabila, is it clear? Yes, sir. So. That's why I've written dy dx. It means change in y is very small at its tending to zero. Similarly, change in x is very small at its tending to zero. So this particular ratio will define you nothing but just a single point. So it will define you slope to that given curve. So your formula would be bring this n exponential to the coefficient and decrease its exponential by one. I'm giving you an example. Suppose if you have y is equals to x cube. So here we have three as exponent. So if you differentiate it using the formula, n is equals to three. So it will be n x three minus one. Is it clear? On simplifying, you will get three x squared. Is it clear, Raza? Yes, sir. Next formula is, if y is equals to any constant term, so its differentiation dy dx would be just zero. I'm defining you why it would be. Let's say y is equals to five. Five is nothing but any constant term, and there would be one multiplied with each part. Now, one can be written in terms of x as x raised to zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. Now, if you apply the formula dy dx, five being constant term, take it outside as coefficient. Here we have x raised to zero. So according to this formula, move exponential to the coefficient and decrease its exponential by one. Now we have this zero in multiplication with this whole part. And if zero multiplied with a number, the whole number would be zero. That's why differentiation of any constant term would be equals to zero. Is it clear? Yes, sir. So. Okay, just write it down.
Have you all written? Yes. Yes, sir. Mikhil? Yes, sir. Lord, sir. Was not done. If y is equals to yes, sir. Sine of x. So its differentiation would be cos x. If y is equals to cos x its differentiation would be minus of sin x and if y is equals to log of x dy dx would be equals to one over x and if y is equals to exponential so its differentiation would be as it is These are some formula regarding this differentiation. I'm giving you some of problems. Find dy dx. First is <clears throat> For any of the expression, move each term to numerator first and write it in terms of exponential and then apply the formula. For any of the problem, first of all, move each term into numerator, then write it in terms of exponential and then apply the formula. Your formula would be if x raised to n and we have to differentiate it it will be n x n minus one okay try to simplify it Sir, can you show how to solve the first one? Just tell me the exponent of it. In this part, your exponent is 4. So using this formula, you have to move the exponential to the coefficient first and reduce the exponential by 1. Okay? So it will get four yes, times x cube. This will be a final answer. You may write under root as x raised to the power plus half. You may write this term as x raised to minus two, then apply the formula. Nabila, is it clear? Yes, sir.
Should I solve? I'm gonna have it done. Yes, sir, I'm doing the last one. Okay. Good, Mamuna. Raza, send me your answer. Mikhail, have you solved? Vashna, send me your answer. Nabila. Yes, so just a second. Okay. Nabila, just see, we have in second part, y is equals to x raised to half, okay? So according to the rule of this exponential, dy dx would be equals to move this exponent to the coefficient as half and decrease its exponent by one. So it will be this. Okay, Namila? Okay, so. Now, if you simplify it, you will get half x to the power half minus one, you will get minus half. Since this expression containing negative exponential, so move it to denominator. So it will be x raised to plus half. And plus half simply defines u under root. So it will be one by two root x as your final answer. Try to simplify it. Next part. Here you have y is equals to x raised to minus two. Good, Raza. Just use the formula and try to simplify. Nikhil, have you solved? Yes, sir. Sir, I've solved the third one. Just send me an answer. Uh, 
Nabila, have you solved the third part? Yes, sir. Just send me your answer. Good. Good, Mikhail. Vashna, have you done? Yes, sir. Just send your answer. If you differentiate it, here we have minus two as exponential, so it will be n x to the power n minus one. So you'll get minus two x raised to minus three, or move it to denominator, you will get plus three. Raza, the last part is just by. So how to differentiate it? Is it a constant term or variable? Raza? Yes, sir. Is it constant or variable? Variable. Why is a variable term? It's a constant. And differentiation of any constant term would be? One. Just say this. If you have y is equals to any constant term, then its differentiation would be? Good. Zero. So it will be just zero. Is it clear to everyone till this part? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm defining some. Yes, sir. Term. Have you all written till this part? Yes, sir. Okay. So we have just finished this whole differentiation. I've just left one part that how to define different operation based problem, like some difference product or quotient related to this differentiation. Then we will start integration. And after completing it, I will define you the third chapter that is motion straight line. Okay. So in next class, we'll start Third chapter, sir. that's motion straight line. Sir, so uh, how much of this chapter is over, sir? We are just defining mathematical physics. So this is almost done. I think we have left only just one part, that is integration. Sir, okay. so in next class, this chapter will get over? This is not your chapter. This is some mathematical tool, oh, okay, which will okay. be helped. This all will help in your later on all the studies and whole physics. Okay, sir. So this is basics. Okay, sir. Yeah. So do you have any doubt in this whole topic? Do you no, any sir. one of you? No, sir. So just revise this whole part and try to memorize most of the term. Okay. We'll meet in next class. Okay, okay sir. Okay. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.